podcast is part of the Sports Social Podcast Network. No breaks. No breaks. No fear. No fear. The official British Speedway podcast. I'm Ian Brannan and it's great to be back with you for our first show of October where so far this month the weather has certainly had its say in British Speedway's playoff picture. Despite only a handful of meetings making it through the rain we've still had some tremendous action and a few surprises as the playoffs in both of Speedway's top two leagues continue. In the Premiership, Peterborough and Wolves were made to wait but it was victory for Bellevue at Ollerton meaning it's the home sides with the advantage ahead of Thursday when now both second legs are going to take place at the same time. We'll get the thoughts of Simon Stead and Mark Lemon to come, plus Aces captain Steve Worrell. Nigel Pearson has been talking to some of the stars of Wolves and Peterborough. We'll hear from Rory Schlein and Luke Becker, who gives a hint to his 2022 plans. And for the Panthers, we've got the Danes Hans Anderson and Michael Palm Toft has got an injury update. That injury to Palm Toft played a critical role in the championship playoff picture after Redcard desperately missed him as Edinburgh took a solid lead into the second leg of their playoff tie. We'll get the thoughts of the red car promotion, as well as the man who did the damage for the Monarchs, Josh Pickering. Sitting pretty and waiting for their turn as the league table toppers are pool pirates. Dave Rowe has been speaking to Danny King about his season on the South Coast. Lots of some positive vibes coming from Perry Barr. An update on a potential Birmingham takeover. We'll speak to Lawrence Rogers. All coming up on No Breaks, No Fear. No Breaks, No Fear. The official British Speedway podcast. First, though, we'd like to pay tribute to a couple of well-known names who have uh, sadly passed away over the past week, Colin Pratt and Alan Graham. Colin Pratt passed away last weekend after a brave battle against illness over the past year. A former rider, manager, management committee member and promoter, Colin did almost everything in Speedway and commanded respect from everyone in the sport. Earlier this year, he became the first inductee into the British Speedway Hall of Fame in recognition of his achievements in the sport. During his riding career, he raced in the 1967 World Final at Wembley and two World Team Cups. He was joint manager of England when they won the World Team Cup in 1989 and won several knockout cups when in charge of Cradley Heath. He moved to Coventry as co-promoter where he won three league titles, two knockout cups and a Craven Shield and also claimed the Elite League title with Bradford in their final season in 1997. Since then, Colin's been a co-promoter at Swindon before switching to Peterborough to be closer to his Norfolk base and remained a co-promoter at Ol Walton. The directors and members of British Speedway Promoters Limited would like to pass on their sincere condolences to Colin's family at this very sad time. In a moment, we'll hear from Chris Van Stratton, who, uh, as well as being one of his main rivals in the sport, also one of his great friends. The Cradley family has also been dealt another tragic blow with the death of legendary rider Alan Graham. Graham passed away on Sunday at the age of 67 from injuries sustained in an accident while racing sidecars. Affectionately known as Big Al, Graham made more than 700 appearances for the Heathens and was part of the team which won national titles in 1981 and 1983. He began his speedway career with Birmingham and also raced for Stoke, Oxford and Hull during a celebrated career. But it was with Cradley he enjoyed his biggest success racing for 13 straight years for the club between 1978 and 1991 and also making a brief return two years later. Wolves owner Chris Van Stratton knew both of them well and has been paying his tribute to two giants of British Speedway. He's speaking with Nigel Pearson. Chris, we've read some nice words from you about Colin, uh, but on the British Speedway podcast right now, I think it's nice to hear from you as his number one rival, but also somebody that you, res- you respected each other and you were actually good friends, weren't you? Indeed. I mean, he lived very close uh, to me in the area. He, he became a Midlander for a considerable period of time, as, as we remember, at, at Cradley and then, of course, at, at Coventry. And he was, uh, we were immense rivals on that race night and very often the next day we didn't speak but by 48 hours later it was all forgotten and we were talking again but that's 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 the way it was you know he was he was very protective of of his own team and and so were we so there were were incidents during those meetings but he just added to the drama of the event but no he, he what he did for the sport over a long period of time you know from every avenue from a rider from everything and and i kind of first 
obviously got to know him when I was a supporter on the terraces in my short trousers watching him go around, you know. So to eventually work alongside him and become a good friend was a huge privilege for me. You know, when I was I was delighted and proud early this year when he became the first member of the Hall of Fame. Yeah. And I think that was a very touchy moment and, and he enjoyed that day as well. And, and I long remember the battles with Colin and also uh, events such as that. Sure, I mean, you know, we all talk about the Dudley Wolves and even Coventry when he was at Coventry as well. And in terms of British Speedway today, we'd love something like that, wouldn't we? Oh, yes. I mean, they, you know, they, they, we seem we seem to be a, a, a sporting moves away without characters now, I think, and, and, and we've, we've lost a lot of that. Yeah. The fact that most of the riders are, are racing in, in the same team, opposition one night, the same team, the next, adds to that dimension, I think. In, in the old days, you were a club man, and that was it, and, and some of the most fierce battles were people like in the Simon Cross area when Colin was there, and of course, dear old Alan, you know, as well. You know, some yeah. of those incidents with those two. But, but it, it, it was terrific entertainment. It added to it. And now it's too, it's too clean, if I'm being honest. Well, interesting words and very good observations. And whilst we're talking about sad news, of course, you've just mentioned him, Big Al, Alan Graham. Um, the great rival of Wolverhampton, just like, just like Colin was, of course. But it was mutual respect, wasn't it? And he ended up working at Monmore on the track yeah. staff. Yeah, he ended up working as a machining examiner, you know, and, and I mean, still to be racing competitively at his age what what an immense character you know and, and he very proud Brummy and then of course spent some time at, at, at Crayley you know no I mean they're, they're two brothers who both I think you know were, were on the, the rostrum at the British Championships weren't they so I know Andy won the title so yeah I mean immense family history and of course there was young John as well at one time so it, it was a big name in, in Midland Speedway and of course he's it's a sad loss but when when I look at it, the fact that he went out virtually doing something that he actually loved is probably something that he would probably appreciate. And sure, I don't want that sure. to sound cruel, but no. You know. no, he was he was enjoying what he was doing. Yeah. I think one of his one of his biggest uh, proudest moments was the fact that he actually won the Golden Hammer at Craigie because you remember what that was like and everybody wanted that, didn't they? Indeed, yeah, yeah. I mean, he was he was the engine engine room of the team, wasn't he? I mean, that was a secret with Alan. Everybody needed an Alan Graham. He wasn't the star, you know, he didn't take all the plaudits, but he was an integral part of a, of a title-winning team. That's the Wolves owner Chris Van Stratton paying tribute to Colin Pratt and Alan Graham, two giants of British Speedway who passed away over the past week. I'm Ian Brannan. Welcome along to No Breaks, No Fear, the official British Speedway podcast. There's lots to get through over the next hour or so, and we're going to start by looking at the fixture that managed to escape the weather on Monday night, and that was at Ollerton Stadium. Sheffield Tigers versus the Bellevue Aces in the um, first leg of their playoff semi-final, um, which was, of course, delayed from the previous week. And it was Bellevue who took a giant step towards the Premiership Grand final with a 50-40 first leg win at Sheffield, despite being without second heat leader Brady Kurtz. The Australian was absent after a crash in the Czech Republic in the Czech Golden Helmet on Sunday, and number one Dan Bewley remarkably started the meeting with three last places. But the Aces still triumphed with a terrific team effort. Captain Steve Worrell led the way with 12 points, whilst brother Richie returned to the side after injury with 11 plus 1. And Charles Wright added 11 plus 2. Jack Holder top scored for the Tigers with 12. Well, let's hear from a few of those involved. Starting with the Aces team manager, Mark Lemon, speaking to Hayley Bromley. 40 points to 50. Bellevue take a 10-point advantage to the National Speedway Stadium on Thursday. We couldn't have asked for anything better than that, could we? Uh, certainly not, you know, to come into a semi-final and take a 10-point lead to the second leg. Yes, it's half-time. The boys just dug deep and rose superbly. Obviously, we were under the pump when we knew we were going to be missing Brady Kurtz. And I just think, you know, the, the, the pressure that was put onto the boys, you know, they had to step up and uh, they certainly did. You know, track conditions were pretty tricky, but they, uh, they really adapted well. That is one word we certainly like at Bellevue, adapted. Um, a lot of fans travelled over to Pennines to join us today. We've just been over there to acknowledge them. It's amazing to see the support these guys are getting. Yeah, that's fantastic here on the turn south, uh, uh, four. You know, like the noise they made you know, in some of the passes, you know, especially when Tom Brennan stole that point you know, and won uh, hit 12 or whatever it was. Uh, yeah, fantastic, absolutely fantastic. Great support. They've been really good pretty much for quite a while, You know, my time here anyway, but uh, 
you know, hopefully we can give them something more uh, to celebrate, you know, when we hopefully finish it off on a Thursday. Or when we finish it off on Thursday. We certainly hope to, and it's been nearly 30 years since we've had a league title at Bellevue, but you can feel the hunger in this team now. There's a sense of belief among the boys. They're really up for it. The fans are up for it. And that's half the recipe to success. Well, there's a little bit more goes into it, but uh, you know we'll, we'll take the, the ride while we can. Um, we'll keep our you know head sort of you know you know level and um, sort of keep the focus you know, you know and the motivation going. You know, there's still you know just because you're a ten point lead doesn't mean uh, it's it's, it's you know, certainty. So uh, these boys know that they've been going through the process all year. Uh, it's, it's just really nice to see when it clicks. And like tonight's clicked. We've been working for it for a long time. I know other teams have too, but uh, I feel like these guys are a bit special certainly are Mark well done and we'll see you on Thursday and what about his opposite number then Simon Stead he certainly doesn't think the tie is done yet it is of course only half time and he thinks it's still all to play for um, we're disappointed as a team um, we would have liked to take some sort of lead but you know the, the beauty of having the first leg is you know you know exactly what job you've got to do um, so we know that there's a 10 point swing that we need to uh, that we need to do and um, I still feel like I've got the right seven lads to be able to do that the conditions have probably played into Bellevue's hands tonight we lost our home track advantage yeah it's disappointing but it's half time and uh, all to play for still track curator Graham Trollop did a, a fantastic job just to get the meeting on in the end it's Trollope actually right <laughs> let's get um he did a great job uh, track staff have worked um really really hard Graham's done a great job um it's just track conditions were different to to usual starts were different to usual and as such uh, it played into Bellevue's hands but like I said, there's another meeting. Uh, it's all to play for. There's another 15 heats, two early five ones. It's all to play for. Pressure and expectation now on the end. Well, that's right. And look, they've had a great following here tonight. They've made plenty of noise. They've got behind their, their lads. Um, but we'll have the same at Bellevue. Um, we know our fans will turn out in numbers. And um, it'll be a great meeting. I just hope we can turn it round for them and, uh, and come out on top because we'll be fighting for it. Well, Simon Stead certainly thinking that uh, a 10-point deficit is uh, something that the Tigers can overcome in that second leg on Thursday. The captain of the Bellevue Aces, Steve Worrell, though, has been speaking to Hayley Bromley in the pits after that meeting on Monday night. And he thinks 10 points, that's quite a decent cushion to have. Here he is. No, it was a good effort from everyone, you know, to take a 10-point lead back into our home leg. What more could you want? Starting the night, we was a bit... Skeptical, you know, the, when you look at the track conditions, we was umming and ahhing if it was going to go ahead. But um, nights like these, it can work against the home riders, you know. And whether it, whether it did or not, I don't know. I think we was just exceptional. No? Even even with Dan's mishaps in his first few races, we, you know, to come away with that ten point lead is brilliant. So well happy. You guys just look so hungry out there. It's been nearly 30 years since Bellevue had a league title and you can just sense the excitement, the anticipation uh, in this team now. The boys want it, you want it, we all want it. Can we do this on Thursday? Can we get to the grand final? I think so. You know, to take a 10-point lead in is, I think it's more than enough. You know, we, we a little bit of breathing room. If we was going in behind, obviously, it's pressure. I feel like we can go into that just a little bit less pressure on our shoulders and, and enjoy it we the last few weeks at home you know our last few performances have been good um, all of us have performed well you know we've, we've upped our game from earlier in the season so quietly confident you know we can take them 10 points in and have a bit of a cushion and yeah bring it home Let's bring it home. Steve Worrell, thank you very much. Cheers, thank you. So it's the Bellevue Aces that begin with a 10-point start on Thursday night, effectively against Sheffield in the second leg of the Premiership uh, playoff semi-final. And the best way to find out what happens on that one is to be there in person because uh, it will not be the main fixture on Eurosport. That will be Peterborough versus Wolves. Uh, There are tickets still available. You can book them in advance at the Bellevue website and you can get hospitality as well if you want. But there will be tickets hopefully available Uh, on uh, the evening first come first served uh, subject to availability uh, and all that kind of thing coming up in the next parts we're going to turn the attention on Peterborough and Wolves they were all gathered ready to race on Monday night but the weather had the final say and it's all back for another go on Thursday evening we'll hear from uh, Peterborough stars Hans Anderson and Michael Palm Toft and from Wolves we'll catch up with Rory Schlein and uh, Luke Becker who gives us a little insight into what his plan might be for 2022 all on the way here on no breaks no fear no breaks no fear the official british speedway podcast 
I'm Ian Brannan and a roundup of some of the action that's been happening over the last week and to be fair there's not been a huge amount of action uh, with the uh, the weather certainly having a say in a number of the fixtures including one of the fixtures on Monday night in the Premiership playoffs the semi-final match at the East of England arena between Peterborough and Wolverhampton was postponed because of a waterlogged track the meeting has been quickly rearranged for this coming Thursday that's October the 7th at 7.30 and it will be live on Eurosport and there'll be reports from the National Speedway Stadium uh, in that match between Bellevue and Sheffield. But Nigel Pearson's trip to the East of England arena wasn't entirely in vain as he took the opportunity to catch up with a few of the stars of the Peterborough Panthers and the Wolverhampton Wolves. And we'll hear from some of the Panthers stars in a few moments. First of all, let's speak to the Wolves captain Rory Schlein with Nigel Pearson. Rory, first things first, um, we go again Thursday. What are your thoughts? Uh... You know, when, when we were actually licking our lips when we saw the rain, because obviously straight away it takes away the home track advantage, as we found out last last Monday. So, um, no, we, me and Scotty had a quick walk out there with Tony, and and, and uh, unfortunately with this material, it, it gets a little, it only needs a little bit of water, and then if it sits here for a period of time, it, it soaks through, and because it's clay based as well. It, it's very hard to manage. So, the right call was made, as much as everyone here would like to see a meeting on, but in the day, it's. Um, it just it's you could probably say it's rideable but not raceable you know uh, it might be hard to understand but definitely you know when you struggle to actually walk it you know you know there's a, there's an issue but Thursday's forecast is good so fingers crossed everything should be back on track should be yeah um yeah. when you're at this time of year it's october so you just i think every day the promoters are just crossing everything you know to make sure they get a dry day so yeah thursday looks better so we'll go then you and i have spoke away from the microphone you've got a plan you believe you can attack Peterborough and turn this around, right? I think so. Like I said it last week that we were, we were level with three races to go the last time we were here. I had an off night. I think Sam had like three injury failures. Um, so it's not like unrealistic. So we've looked at this, all pressure's on them. You know, you know they don't they don't get the result. You know, they're the ones that have to keep you know keep their their foot on the pedal. So. We can come here Thursday and just do our own thing and uh, just keep you know, applying the pressures until we eat 15. So uh, if we can do that, the pressure heaps more on them than, than on us. Farewell meeting coming up as well, Rory. I know you've got a lot on a plate at the moment, mm. but um, Ryan Douglas and Hans Anderson confirmed now. Um, online ticketing as well. A great way to support you. Yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, it's, uh, it's at that point of year where it's all starting to come pretty quick. And... Um, uh, you know, I'd, I would have liked a little bit more time to get it sorted, but you know, as long as people can turn up and 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 everyone can, I can see everyone one last time. And uh, the way things are going, I'm probably going to be riding after that, so it's not going to be like a farewell. But it, yeah, look, as long as I can get a good turnout, which I'm hoping for, and and everyone just has a good time, um, you know, that'd be great. Just remind us where, when, what yeah. time? Uh, Wolverhampton, 18th, 7:30. Uh, you know, the lineup's looking pretty good. Um, you know, I've got a good prize on for the line, so the boys will definitely want to win it. <laughs> and um, online tickets available, so even if you can't get to the meeting, if people want to support you, they can buy a ticket. Yeah, I've, I've had some people saying they can't make it and, they, you know, they want to do some sort of donation. And so what we've done, we just sort of said, well, if, if you'd like to do that, you can do it just by, you know, buying an online ticket. So, um, you know, it's got to move with the times and, you know, it's a good way to do it. We've got other people waiting to talk to us, so just one final thought, Rory. Colin Pratt. Um, sad news over the weekend. Would you like to say a few words about Pratty? Yeah, um, well, I think anyone as uh, like anyone that's raced in England has dealings with Colin, and he was uh, one of the big reasons why I hit. it was him and Peter Oakes that brought me to Coventry, where we had that stellar run. And um, you know, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have moved to Coventry. Wouldn't have met you know my fiance. And so you know, I spent a lot of time with Colin, and uh, I owe a lot to him. You know, I think people like Greg and Billy and all them guys, you know, who come from a long way. He looked after us, and um, yeah, it's a it's a sad day. Thanks for your time, Rory. Cheers, thank you. It's Rory Schlein ending by paying tribute to uh, Colin Pratt, who sadly passed away last weekend. And obviously we mentioned some of his achievements and, and some of the, the clubs that he'd managed and um, been a promoter of. And of course, he was a rider himself. But perhaps you, you forget just quite how many riders he was responsible for bringing into to British Speedway. And without doing that, maybe some uh, huge stars we'd, we'd never know of. And uh, Rory Schlein certainly being uh, one of them. And maybe that connection continues in a way with uh, our next star. 
star because if Rory Schlein's the experience, Luke Becker is the youth. And uh, Luke Becker has certainly been taken under the wing of Greg Hancock, of course, another rider that uh, Colin Pratt helped bring to uh, uh, our shores uh, many, many years ago. And Luke Becker has had a great season, certainly caught the eye of, uh, of many fans through the course of uh, 2021. What about his plans from 2022? Well, that's just one of the questions that's put the way of Luke Becker by Nigel Pearson. Luke, we're in the pits at Peterborough straight after the uh, announcement has been made that the meeting is called off. You've got to do it all again on Thursday. How, how are you feeling about that? Oh, we're feeling good. I mean, of course, you don't want to go out there if the track's you know dangerous and uh, a bit not rideable. It's not good for racing. It could be a bit dangerous on the same time. So um, all in all, it's a good call. We've actually got really lucky this year for Wolves. I was just talking to the mechanic. I think we only had one rain off, which was an individual meeting at the beginning of the season. So we've been pretty lucky all season. So hopefully this will... Uh, you're only uh, upset then. <laughs> now, of course, the first leg finished a two-point defeat. You seem to sort of struggle in the early stages of that meeting. So, in fair weather, you're confident that you can go back to Peterborough and turn that around. Is that right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I definitely did struggle, which is a bit off because usually when it's um, a bit wet at, at Wolves, I end up doing a lot better. So, it was just one of those nights where uh, nothing was clicking. I think uh, kind of wasn't really attacking the track how I should have been and kind of wasn't really uh, riding mentally correct as I uh, should have been going out there with the right heads like mindset and um, but you know that's all part of the experience I'm young and uh, we'll learn from it yeah sure and what about Peterborough's a track you know you, in dry and fair conditions which we haven't got tonight which is why it's off um, you feel confident that the team can turn that two-point deficit around yeah two points really isn't nothing and um to be honest, I, I, of course, we don't want to be down going into it, but I don't mind it at all. I think it's a little bit better, uh, just kind of kicks us into gear and really makes us want it that much more. But, yeah, it's easily easily doable. Um, of course, Peterborough have a really good, strong side, so it's not going to be easy, but I think we're perfectly capable. It's been announced over the weekend as well, Luke, that the Speedway World Cup is going to return in a couple of years' time. Of course, you've raced in the World Cup for uh, the USA, so you very early experience. Is that something you're pleased about, to see the, uh, the the World Cup return? 100%. Yeah, that's definitely a thing. Um, it, it's cool, though, because they, they have it, I believe, every other three every three years. So that's at least we have a little bit of both, Speedway Nations and World Cup. We don't really have as many, um, you know, as guys in the squad as we did a couple years back. But I think it's still a really good uh, exposure for some younger kids, some other people back home that don't really have any experience overseas. So all in all, it's going to... All in all, I think it's doing nothing but benefit USA. Can you see a way forward where perhaps, you know, maybe in five, ten years' time, we can maybe have a, a USA Grand Prix with a couple of you guys in the Grand Prix system? I sure hope so. Now, when I read that, I was uh, nothing but stoked for it. Hopefully that ends up following through. Um, they got, just listen to some of their ideas that Discovery is coming out with. It's just unreal and um, no, going to do nothing but grow the sport, hopefully back home as well. And some ideas are the same of getting more exposure and, uh, Getting the sport, the sport more recognized back home in the States is something that's going to help us out overall in general. So, yeah, really stoked to hear the, the new news. Brilliant. Um, just finally, Luke, I know you've got a lot on your plate with potentially a grand final, depending on how Thursday goes now for Wolverhampton, but have you looked ahead to 2022? Have you sort of thought where you'd like to be, uh, you, where you want to be in terms of British Speedway and your calendar? Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, everything this year worked out perfectly, and... Um, Riding in the first division in Poland has been awesome, and it's, it, it works out good because I'm still able to do two other leagues, which even if it came down to an opportunity of getting an extra league spot, that would definitely be something in my, you know, thinking about being able to just have to drop a league. That would be a really hard decision, but um, I'm already, I have a deal done in, in Wuch, staying there again next year in Poland, and um, hoping that uh, we can just kind of keep the same thing going next year as well. So we'll uh, see what ends up playing out. So, as it stands, you are available to re-sign for Wolverhampton if that's what they want and that's what you want to do. Correct. Good summary. Thanks for joining us, Luke. Thank you. Appreciate it. OK, read between the lines, folks. Uh, there's uh, Luke Becker speaking with Nigel Pearson about uh, many things. Uh, his plans for next year, potentially. Um, and also the, the thoughts of uh, the expanding Grand Prix series. And that's something we've not really uh, had chance to talk about so far because it happened uh, in the middle of last week. And uh, that is 
pretty exciting, I think, how the, the GP situation is changing. Obviously not massive changes in terms of the calendar just yet, but uh, I think over the next 10 years or so, there's certainly going to be a few more rounds added and uh, certainly with an eye in, in taking it to uh, countries perhaps where the Speedway Grand Prix uh, has never been before. And uh, that'll be exciting to see how, how that all plays out. But uh, crucially for us in Great Britain, we've got that date back on the calendar for Cardiff. Many said it would never happen, but Cardiff... Cardiff is back on the calendar the 13th of August. If you haven't seen about that just yet, it is back on Saturday, 13th of August, British Grand Prix, Cardiff's Principality Stadium. And uh, an extra event as well. It's uh, called the SGP2, but it's uh, it's an under-21 series which will be happening on the Sunday. So there will be two meetings at the Principality Stadium for uh, fans who are making the, uh, the Cardiff trip. So it is going to be a bit different uh, on that front but uh, exciting different because you get two meetings in the in the stadium and you know it's not going to get rained off that's the big bonus of course now let's talk about the Peterborough Panthers because of course they do have a very slender lead going into the second leg of the playoff semi-final at um, the East of England showground on Thursday night which will be in front of Eurosports TV cameras and Hans Anderson knows they've got to make that advantage count he's speaking to Nigel Pearson Hans, October in England here we are at Peterborough um, what, are you, what are your thoughts on the decision to call Monday night's meeting off? Oh, it's obviously the right decision. Um, uh, this this track is is different. You say, oh, we did ride in the rain at Wolves uh, last week, but this is a clay-based track, and we know even on a normal day when the track is fully well prepared, if there's a bit of water on, it gets so icy. Yeah. And like, if people are tippy toeing around the track just to stand up, you know, you, how can you expect riders to ride a motorcycle around them? But yeah, it's the right call. Um, unfortunately, uh, we have to wait a few days to get this um, over and done with, but. Again, both teams have worked the whole season for this. You don't really want it to be a lottery who goes through. Yeah, good words, absolutely. So, generally speaking, I think most people, is it fair to say, most people in this stadium tonight, riders, officials, were were pretty accepting of the fact that it was the right call? Yeah, I think I don't. I've not spoken to anyone in the pits saying you know we should have raced it because, like, like I say, if you if people are tippy toeing around just to stand upright on the track, it's not raceable and. The thing was as well to say, oh, they needed to blade a lot of it off. But again, we late in the year, probably oh, then the moist at night start to come up. So they might, they wouldn't change. It will get wet, and you can just see now it's it's cold as well. Yeah. Uh, so it was definitely the right call. And what they said, the track people said, we can tr- if we do it, we might actually destroy the track which they've built up uh, over the years. Yeah, sure. So. Thursday looks better in terms of forecasts and all the rest of it. So uh, a job to be completed for you guys at Peterborough. It is. and uh, Obviously, we want ideal and normal conditions uh, because normally we do have a little bit of a home track advantage and we definitely need that because the Wolves boys, they will be up uh, up for it because they they wanted to be in that final and they didn't want to go down uh, to us in the first meeting. But again, it's only two points. And, you know, if they pop out and heat one, get a 5-1, they're in the lead. I roll. So... um, is, it's never going to be, it's never going to be easy. But hopefully, with our home track knowledge and and track craft, we probably should be able to go through to the final. What happens with yourself now, Hans? Do you stay in England until Thursday now, or do you head back to Denmark? I am straight out in the morning. I've, um, <laughs> it's easy nowadays. Uh, it's only an hour and twenty odd minutes the flight to Denmark, and I live about an hour from the airport. I've got, I've got two kids at home which haven't seen their dad for a very long time. With, Obviously, me doing both leagues, and it's good for have two teams to go in the playoff. But it's just seemed like normally the season starts in March, and this season we started in May, and I I had a run of uh, I did 14 meetings in 13 days, so I didn't see my kids at all in that time. And uh, kids are only small ones, so I don't really want to miss them growing up. So I'm going home. Yeah, don't blame me. What is it, Stansted to Billen, the home of Legoland? It is, and it's just easy. Like I said, it, from here to Stansted is less than an hour. I live less than an hour from Billen, so tomorrow, uh, by the time both my kids come home from school, the dad's there, so I just Perfect. want to see them. Brilliant. That's uh, Absolutely, I'm with you 100% on that, uh, well, and well done. Um, now, you've ridden for Coventry in the past, so we've just got to mention Colin Pratt. Mm-hmm. Um, sad news about Pratty. What are your thoughts on, on your memories of Colin? Oh, Colin, you know, he, he was very good to me. He, even he, he was always very helpful, supportive, even even when I was riding as an away rider. He was always very um, 
friendly and you know he's sadly missed he's done a lot for the speedway he's always you know, done a lot been friendly and gave and give, given us advice uh, you know it, it's it's very sad to see um, people pass away and obviously I sent my deepest thoughts to the family and yeah, Colin would be well missed he's done so much for English speedway in general great words um, enjoy your time back with the kids you'll be uh, you'll be arguing with them before you realize it Hans. you'll be you know they'll be driving you mad after about 10 minutes won't they nah you gotta remember that I didn't write at all last season when there was Covid so I had a lot of time with my boys back last year so I don't think a, a couple of days would, uh, would be it's different being at home every single day for yeah. a year instead of just going home two days great to see you and uh, good luck for Thursday night thanks for joining us thank you yeah, it's nearly time for Speedway Rider holidays coming soon. Maybe just in time for the restrictions to ease so they can jet wherever they want with a, with a bit more ease, perhaps, depending on where you're based, I suppose. Um, well, one rider who has certainly been a talking point in both the Premiership and the Championship playoff picture is Michael Palm Toft. Now, he fell off uh, on his first ride last Monday at Wolves. Obviously, it was a very tricky track and uh, sustained some finger injuries, which meant that he wasn't able to ride for red car last weekend in their playoff uh, first leg against Edinburgh, which um, actually really cost red car quite dearly. And we'll hear from uh, the red car promotion, Jitendra Duffel, and we'll hear from uh, Jamie Swales uh, in the next part. But uh, right now, let's get an update on his injury situation. Michael Palm Toft is with Nigel Pearson. Well, one man who may benefit from a postponement of this semi-final is Michael Palm Toft, who's with me now. Michael, um, doesn't look good your left hand but you're hopeful that maybe a few more days you may have a chance yeah we're doing everything we can obviously I wanted to ride today but put love on last night and tried to pull my uh, clutch sleeve and I could just feel it, it's it's not happening so a few extra days and some uh, extra treatment on it hopefully we, we're going to get there because you've been flying lately haven't you particularly around Peterborough yeah um, don't really know what to put it down so we just found some extra speed in the bikes and uh, seemed to work so yeah it's just we just want to ride so you've had a good season generally whatever happens from here going forward you're quite happy with your form this season yeah i'm really happy uh, really i'm really happy in both leagues to be fair obviously my my i think my average is lower in the other league but yeah definitely for peterborough i i, I, I set a goal um started the season and I, I think I've even set it out somewhere I wanted to be number one and it happened so I've, I've achieved my goal here so yeah I'm, re- I'm really happy with the season obviously I want some silverware to, to prove it so hopefully we get there Just going back to the injury the problem you have Michael is that the, the meetings are now thick and fast we're recording this interview on Monday night at Peterborough for the British Speedway podcast that goes out Tuesday night and then 48 hours from the podcast is a rearranged date and then if Peterborough go through the grand final is next Monday and Thursday there's not a lot of time Michael is there? No the, the, the time is definitely not on my side um, obviously we're hoping even if I can just write the finals um, we'll see what happens uh, obviously some extra treatment and so on on the fingers will will definitely do it good it, it's a lot better than what it was um, and I was hopeful of riding today even a couple of days ago so hopefully we'll get there but if it wasn't your left hand for the clutch if it was the right hand are you telling me that you'd probably have raced at the weekend in the championship as well yeah yeah I would have rode uh, different it's the story. wrong hand then yeah 100% it's it's only because I have to clutch yeah. that's the that's the only problem and and even if if it does heal yeah, heal a bit more and I feel better I still have to use other fingers to clutch with yeah. um, it, it, my my concern is holding on to the bike and clutching at the same time and yeah, so on. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, if, if, if we can just get it a little bit better, we yeah. should be riding. And, I, and I, I did see the the ride that you did come out at Wolverhampton after the accident, you missed the start completely, didn't you? I mean, you were, you were just left behind at the start. It was obviously a problem for you. Yeah, yeah, it was a problem for me. Probably my head wasn't at the right right place either. Um, obviously we just had that happen and, and it was hurting even putting the glove back on even I didn't know what I had actually done to my hand then it's like I was shouting a bit in the pits when I put it back on um, so yeah it, it wasn't good uh, I've, I've had some pain up through my arm when, when I went to the pit, uh, when I went to the start line so it wasn't good but 
you, you do some silly things sometimes. <laughs> you do a speedway rider in particular. Um, but yeah, hopefully, fingers crossed, a few days, and we'll, it's not the last we've seen of you on a bike in, in 2021. I don't hope so. Um, like I said, I, I want to ride. Um, it doesn't feel right when you're sat on the sideline watching your team win or lose or whatever. You want to be in there and and be part of it. So I, w- I, want, to, I want to show I'm, I'm number one here. We wish you well, whatever happens. Well done on a great season and thanks for joining us, Michael. Thank you very much. Yeah, he's one rider who could have a huge say in the playoff picture in both the Premiership and the Championship because, of course, rides for Red Car and they've got uh, their second leg on the Friday night this week against Edinburgh. That's going to be up at Armadale. And then the night before that, of course, for Peterborough, live on TV against Wolves. And uh, a lot of people hoping he can make both of those fixtures. And it is the Championship where we turn our attention next. We'll hear from uh, some of the Red Car promotion. We'll hear from uh, Tendra Duffel and Jamie Swales. And we'll also hear from the man who did the damage against them in the absence of Michael Palm Toft. A uh, big scorer for Edinburgh was Josh Pickering. We'll hear from Josh. We'll also get an update on a potential takeover bid at Birmingham as well. The team manager, Lawrence Rogers, is going to be updating us. And we'll hear from one man who's uh, sitting back and uh, watching all the playoff action go by in the championship for the time being because um, Danny King, riding for pool, they finish league leaders. They get the pick of uh, who they race against in the the next round for the semi-finals so we'll catch up with Danny King as well soon here on No Breaks No Fear No Breaks No Fear the official British Speedway podcast I'm Ian Brannan. Welcome along to this week's No Breaks, No Fear, where right now, for the rest of the show, the focus is on the championship. And Red Car's playoff hopes are hanging by a thread after their undefeated home record was ended emphatically by an impressive Edinburgh side in the first leg of the quarter-final at the Media Prima Arena. Red Car struggled for heat winners throughout the evening, with an Edinburgh rider taking the chequered flag in a staggering 11 heats as they ran out 39-51 winners on the night. Redcar were severely limited by the loss of Michael Palm Toft earlier in the week. Rider replacement was their only option available to cover for him, and uh, that returned a paltry two points, which was one of the key differences between the sides. The Monarchs took the lead in Heat 2 when Drew Kemp passed Jordan Jenkins on lap 3, and then Drew Kemp went on to have a further six rides throughout the course of the evening, and his 13 points helping his side to victory. Another of the star men for the Edinburgh Monarchs was Josh Pickering, who had had a fantastic evening and really enjoyed going big and wide and fast around the red car circuit. We'll hear from Josh Pickering very soon. Let's get the thoughts after that of the red car camp. We'll hear from Jamie Swales in a few moments. Uh, first of all, though, I caught up with Jitendra Duffel after that defeat. Tough night at the office. You always knew that was probably going to be the case, though, losing Michael Palm Toft as you did. Yeah, there was just absolutely no way we could actually cover for him. Um, he was the worst person we could have lost. Fourth on the averages, I mean, we had no choice but RR. We only got two points um, from his rider replacement rides tonight and, um, and yeah, it cost us big time. So, as we suspected, it was going to be difficult and we've got a massive job to do now if we're to progress. Um, we, we've just got to go to Edinburgh and do our best. We, we know now it's unlikely, but it's not over till it's over. Um, despite the scoreline, it doesn't really reflect on how close the meeting was. You know, it was pretty much level the first half of that meeting three threes for a lot of the the first seven or eight heats and even when there was big victories for uh, for edinburgh the the racing was fantastic yeah it was a great meeting to watch um you know edinburgh uh, from you know from the, the first couple of heats looked pretty dominant we we managed to pull ourselves back within a couple of points at one point but they, they were way too strong at the end um you know the heat leaders especially in those big heats um Josh Pickering in particular uh, was spectacular. Um, yeah, and they were the better team on the night. You know, we've, we've got to give that to them. Um, but, yeah, a lot of work to do now. Uh, it's very unlikely that we're going to progress. Uh, we, we definitely need Michael Palm Toft back if we have any chance of doing that. But, you know, we'd, we'd be daft to give up. We don't do that. Um, you know, the pressure's off now. We're just going to do our best. Drew Kemp loves this track. That's why we used him as a guest so much early in the season. And they rode this track tonight as, as well as we did. Um, Pickering was brilliant around the boards. So we've got the second best away results of the years. Only Pool being better away from home than us. And we did good there in our first match and we're a stronger team now. So there's no reason why, if we go with a full team, uh, why we can't pull this back. 
Thoughts of the Red Car Bears co-promoters. That was Jamie Swales before that, Jitendra Duffel, who certainly, whilst it's a 12-point a lead that the Edinburgh Monarchs have, certainly uh, they don't feel that it's uh, something that's insurmountable. Now, a rider who was great value entertainment on Sunday evening around the Red Car circuit was Josh Pickering, and it's been talked about quite a lot this season, but uh, certainly delivered on the night, and uh, as well as delivering the points, as I say, certainly delivering some great entertainment for the fans. And he's been speaking about about his uh, red car experience with Ryan Guest. Well, yeah, the playoffs got underway for the Edinburgh Monarchs at the weekend and a, a dream result, really, away at red car in the first leg. Yeah, it was a very good result. Um, went there earlier in the year, like it was our second match of the season and, um, you know, we had a couple of newcomers and things like that, so we drew with them then, we drew at home with them. Uh, we knew it was going to be tough, but I feel with the way we've been riding and having Richie back in the squad again, it's just... You know, we've got good strength in uh, through our heat leaders. We've got good second strings and we've got right down the bottom in, in reserves and that paid dividends and uh, it was great to get a 12-point lead. Yeah, for yourself personally as well, obviously uh, last Wednesday at Birmingham uh, went there. It's a, it's a place you had a, a bad crash a couple of years ago and a, a difficult meeting a, a few weeks ago. But last Wednesday went there, got a 15-point max and another stunning individual performance at Red Car as well. Yeah, it was good, mate. Um, as you said, like I haven't been back to Birmingham since I did have that accident in 2019 and I was a little bit scared, to be honest, uh, when I got there and I never usually get like that. I usually just, you know, get on with it and nothing really worries me, but I was a bit worried and, you know, uh, scoring three points it showed, but then um, after I did go there, I knew what to expect for next time. I knew I can ride a bike and I just had to attack it a bit better and uh, I went there with a lot better attitude and... Yeah, we got the 15 points and that was really nice. Yeah, Red Carver as well, I'm told him one of your rides uh, rode the wall of death in one and even went back out to inspect the fence after. Yeah, I, I was. I um, That heat 15, it was, she was pretty tight going up that back straight and Sam snuck up the inside of Jake and Sam went mid-track, Jake went wide and then I went really wide, you know. But, um, yeah, it was good. We, you know, paid off and still got 4-2 and got a heat advantage in heat 15, which is very important. And um, other than that, man, we just got to continue this form now. Uh Obviously, Bellevue had a good one tonight and there's no reason why we can't turn it around and do the same to them at Bellevue on Thursday. Um, back to Edinburgh for me for Friday against Redcar for the, the second leg of that and then I believe our first leg of the Knockout Cup on Sunday at Glasgow. Um, hopefully, if we get through Bellevue, we're going to roll into next week then, Monday, either Peterborough or Wolves and you know it's going to be busy towards the end of the season but I'm enjoying me riding and um, yeah, that's what I'm here for. It was certainly box office stuff and uh, Red Car Bears showed that meeting on uh, live stream and uh, I think you can still get hold of it and, and watch the full meeting because certainly if you're in neutral and you want to watch some great speedway, it's uh, certainly one to watch because there was some terrific racing. And the other championship playoff quarter final, which uh, happened last week, uh, was uh, a massive win for the Leicester Lions over the Scunthorpe Scorpions and uh, it was finished Scunthorpe 36, Edinburgh 54. So Leicester going back to the Paul Chapman and Suns Arena for uh, the the second leg, which will be happening uh, this weekend, with an 18 point lead. Uh, is it a stonking lead? But uh, you never know. Stranger things uh, have obviously happened. But you'd certainly put Leicester down to be a favourite uh, to be uh, in the semi finals. And when we get to the semi finals, that's when Poole and Glasgow come into it because they have a bye in the championship through to the semi final rounds. And Poole Pirates finishing top. They have the first pick of who they will face. Let's hear from one of the riders who'll be involved in whoever it is they do face, uh, in Danny King, who's been racing down on the south coast this year for the Pool Pirates and enjoyed a great season so far and hoping to claim not one but two pieces of silverware. He's speaking with Dave Rowe. Danny, obviously a really strong season for Pool, some, some big results at home lately, but now you're, you're left waiting to find out who you're racing and when you're racing. Absolutely. Um, you know, it's been a fantastic year. It's, it's been a tricky one as well. You know, we did start a little bit later than everyone else, but um, it worked in our favour. We, we had a, a busy run uh, all through the summer and um, I think it played into our hands. We, uh, we rode well as a team and finished top of, the, top of the table, which was obviously our goal. So just a waiting game now, unfortunately, a few rain offs, but um, within the next few days, we should know who uh, our options are to pick. Every meeting at home, you seem to be clocking up scores in the mid-50s. We know the strength of your heat leaders, but uh, tell us about the impression that young Benjamin Basso has made and the reserves doing well. To be fair, the bottom end of the team has been fantastic. I mean, Ben Basso is a fantastic talent. I think he's going to go a long way. Um, he's learning a lot, though. You know, he's he's one of the fastest guys I've seen on a spear bike, as long as he can stay on. But um, <laughs> the last probably three weeks, he's he's actually learned that you can go a bit slower to go faster. And um, he's really put in some great great performances and some good passes as well, especially around Paul. 
As far as the league is concerned, obviously we've seen the first legs of the quarterfinals. Both away teams have won by quite a distance. So you pretty much know who the options are. Is there a chat between the riders now? What, how does that work in terms of uh, Captain C and, and talking to the riders? Yeah, so it's, um, we've actually started. We, uh, we had a little chat today. Um, obviously, we're just going to see how things play out and then we'll, we'll continue to chat during the week and, and um, see what, where, where we feel we'll go best and where the majority want to go. And still a chance for a League and Cup double. Paul are renowned for mm. winning everything yeah, for several years in the top flights. Their first year at Championship level, it's been a really strong season. You could still win both and you're waiting now on a, a Cup semi between Glasgow and Edinburgh for a potential final there. Yeah, definitely. Obviously, that's the goal. Um, it was the, that's what we were told we needed to do from Matt at the beginning of the year and um, so far so good. But it's the business end now, you know, there's no room for error. Um, every meeting is so important and um, it's down to us to, to make sure we're 100% and we go get the results. And just personally, Danny, you've, you've had a really strong season looking at your averages in both leagues. They're the highest they've been for a number of years. Are you feeling better than you have done for probably five, six years? Yeah, definitely. Certainly uh, since my injury, you know, in uh, 2018, it's... I feel like I'm getting back to where I should be and um, I still feel like I've got more to give. So um, I'm really, really pleased with my, my personal form this year and um, obviously important to finish off strong and then look on to next year and uh, just keep trying to push up. Thanks, good luck for the playoffs. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. Yeah, some exciting times ahead in the championship over the final weeks of the season. Birmingham manager Lawrence Rogers has revealed there's been some interest declared in taking over the club. Co-owners Peter and David Mason stepped down following Wednesday's final meeting of the season against Edinburgh. Rogers has paid tribute to the Masons, but himself, he's refusing to leave and is optimistic of another Brummies takeover. I'm part of the furniture now. You know, I can't move from here. Um, you know, love being here. And, you know, I've been working hard over several weeks now to try and get something sorted to uh, arrange that the Brummies survive. There are several lots of interest in there, yeah. And there's, there's no offer at the table yet because there's a few things to sort out and to agree w- with uh, David and Peter, you know, on, on what they've got here as, as assets. Uh, you know, there's a little bit of a difference between their value and what uh, the consortiums want to pay. We, we need to do more... Um, marketing and promotions and the, the, the people who are interested in uh, taking the club forward uh, want to do that quite a bit. Well, all the best to the Birmingham Brummies and of course we'll keep you up to date here on No Breaks, No Fear with any developments uh, in next week's episode. And of course keep an eye on speedwaygb.co.uk Looking ahead to the upcoming fixtures this week then, well we've uh, talked about uh, the big action that's going to be happening on Thursday in the Premiership. It's the playoff semi-final second legs and it's Bellevue versus Sheffield at the National Speedway Stadium and Peterborough versus Wolverhampton at the East of England Showground and that is the main fixture on Eurosport with reports from the National Speedway Stadium. And then on Friday night, it's Edinburgh versus Redcar in the Championship Playoff quarterfinal second leg. As we've heard, uh, Edinburgh have uh, quite a big lead there to take to Armadale but Redcar still not ruling out a comeback and I suppose that's the same for Scunthorpe as well who are 18 points down against Leicester going into their playoff second leg in the quarterfinals at the Paul Chapman and Sons Arena and then it's a Scottish derby this Saturday night between Glasgow and Edinburgh in the Championship Knockout Cup semi-final first leg what a weekend for the Edinburgh fans in store and then all things being equal Monday hopefully we'll see the first First date for the Premiership Grand Final, but um, we'll confirm that uh, on the usual channels nearer the time, but we'll pencil that in. We'll be back with you next Tuesday, though, with uh, all the reaction from the past seven days. And, of course, looking ahead to the Speedway of Nations Final, which will be happening at the National Speedway Stadium in Manchester next weekend. So uh, something to look forward to there as well. All happening in British Speedway. Thanks for your company this week. No Breaks, No Fear is a Nigel Pearce and Media Limited production for British Speedway. No brakes, no fear. The official British Speedway podcast. This podcast is part of the Sports Social Podcast Network. Sports Social Podcast Network. Did you miss your deadline to renew your Medicaid coverage? You can still send your completed annual review form to Healthy Connections Medicaid. You may be assigned to another health plan, but you can ask to come back to First Choice within 60 days of renewed Medicaid eligibility. It's your family. It's your choice. First Choice is the right choice. Renew and choose us. 
Visit selecthealthofsc.com slash renew to learn more.